I've had the idea of making sports content for a while. If you've paid attention to any of my social medias, you've you've probably had the idea that I like sports. So I've wanted to at least branch out to it in some way. Uh, and one way that I've thought of doing it is taking the Steve Dangle approach and just reacting to games of teams that I like and, and analyzing them. It's been something I've thought about for a while. And after last night, Game one of the World Series between the Yankees and the Dodgers, I think I have to just do it. Because I have a lot I want to say about that game. <sighs> I was watching it. No, I... We went into that game, or before that game started, I knew it was game one, but I was telling myself, it's must win. Simply for the sole reason that Cole was pitching. You... <sighs> You put out your ace, you gotta get the best out of him, and you gotta win while you have your best pitching out there, because you don't want to waste that. And that is exactly what happened. Yesterday, Cole went, uh, I think it was six innings, where he allowed, it was either three or four hits, no walks, and had one earned run. And even then, you could argue that the, the run wasn't earned, but because of the way that scoring works, it I doubt it was going to be called an error. But you can't... And yeah, so he did a great job. He did exactly what he was supposed to, and then we took him out in the sixth, probably to get him ready for game four, which I don't really mind too much. Uh, I saw some people complaining about it. I don't... I don't really mind it too much for that reason. But when your pitcher gives you a start like that, you have to capitalize on it. I understand that Flaherty is a good pitcher. He had a great year. But the thing is, he's not Garrett Cole. He's not Garrett Cole. You, He is not as good as the guy that we put out. And yes... We did score more runs off of him than Cole allowed, but two runs is not enough. This Dodger team is struggling on its pitching department because everyone is injured. You have to capitalize on that, and they just couldn't. And then you got the fielding is not giving any help at all to the pitching. We had, I think it was three triples. And realistically, or three triples against us, and realistically, none of them should have been triples. All three of them should have been fielded better, because then they wouldn't have been triples. Okay, maybe one of them... So you have Soto in either the... F I think it was the first inning. Uh, that fly ball to right field couldn't get it. That's fine. But it's the fact that he couldn't play the ball afterwards. If you get that ball earlier, it's it's a, uh, it's a double. Which, granted, the Dodgers did not score on. So we're good there. Next triple, like fourth or fifth inning maybe? Down the third base line, because... Which should have been uh, a ground ball out, but because the Yankees suck at their defensive shifts and what they're doing, and the teams can hit against it, it goes by! When it shouldn't! So, and then it hits the wall, it should be a single, Verdugo doesn't know how to play it, and it goes in for a triple, and... I don't remember, was that the Freeman one? I think that might have been the Freeman one, which makes it even worse, because it's left field, a triple to left field, by a guy on a bum angle. Angle. Ankle. He shouldn't be able to get to third. And he does. No, he was it wasn't Freeman. That one wasn't Freeman. I think Freeman was the first inning. Which triple to right field uh for a guy on a bum ankle is better. Well not not better, but more understandable. 
But either way, it doesn't matter who's running, you can't let a ball in shallow left field turn into a triple. And it's made even worse by the fact that he scores on a sack fly. If he scored on a regular hit, whatever. Because he'll, he'll score anyway, whether he's on second or third, probably. Sack fly, he's not going anywhere. It's not even a sacrifice fly, it's just a fly ball. And he's out. But that's not what happened. He was on third. Soto couldn't throw it home in time because they couldn't get the ball in and prevent him from being on third. And then, was it the eighth of the ninth? I think it was the eighth. Another triple off the top of the wall by Otani. Soto doesn't field it cleanly. And Torres, in all of his lazy ass in the field, decides to just lackadaisically try to scoop the ball. There is... <sighs> and then it, it goes by. Otani goes to third. When he doesn't need to. And then, the next... And then he scores on a sack fly again. Both of the runs scored by the Dodgers during standard innings, uh, before extras, we're off of triples that should not happen, that should not have happened, followed by sacrifice flies. If either one of those is not a triple, and we clean, we feel it cleanly, they don't score. The Otani one hurts especially, because it wasn't just one person who made a fielding mistake, it was two. Soda didn't field it cleanly. And then Torres, I, I already called him lazy, but it needs to be repeated. That was a lazy play. You can't do that. The ball, it, Otani is on second base. He's not going anywhere. You don't need to try to do a weird scoop in it. Just knock it down. He's not moving if the ball is at your feet. But if the ball is 30 feet away and you have to run and grab it first before you can throw it, he's going to go. And that's what he did. Otani's a threat on the base pass. You can't give him those opportunities. And they did. Three triples. In Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium is not very deep. I think average depth in Dodger Stadium is less than the average depth in Yankee Stadium. I know that people often talk about Yankee Stadium and it's short porch and whatever, which is true. But center and left field are deep. You're, I mean, I guess that because right field is the deep, is the shallow part, you're not going to get triples there. But either way, allowing three triples because of, f of poor defensive play on a shallow fence field is no good. You can't do that. And then we have the hitting. I love Stan. Stan is fantastic in the playoffs. I, I don't care if he's just mediocre in, in the regular season, if he plays like this in the playoffs, because if you can play like this in the playoffs, all that matters is that you make them in the first place. I'd rather have an okay squad in the regular season and good in the postseason than the other way around. Because once you get to the postseason, you have to win. In the regular season, your goal is to make it there. You want the easiest path. So, yes, do well in the regular season. But also do well in the postseason. In regular inning, I don't... I actually don't know what the term for that is, but I'm just going to call them standard innings. In standard innings, I think the number was 11 men left on base. That is more than one per inning. That is completely unacceptable. For a team that has championship aspirations, that is in the championship, that wants to win, you have to score some of them. At least one. At least 
one of 11. But no, they don't do that. It's, and the only runs that are scored before extras is the Stanton two home two run blast moonshot. I was losing it. It was incredible, An incredible moment. Everyone in the room lost their minds. I understand it was the fifth inning or whatever, but still, two run home run to take the lead in the World Series. It's exciting. And that's it. I think that inning, we had bases loaded at one point after the home run and none of them scored. How do you do that? You have the momentum, you have the energy after the home run, capitalize on it. And they just leave those guys stranded. I was looking at uh, Verdugo's stats specifically this, uh, this postseason. I actually thought he was doing a lot better than he really was. Defensively, yeah, it's been great. But in terms of hitting, I, I thought he was hitting pretty well, and he hasn't been. No. I know that batting average isn't everything, and I, I am part of that club that's that, that kind of scoffs at anyone who uses batting average as a legitimate talking point in, in current year. But I, it is also fair to say that if your batting average is below 200, you're not doing great. And Verdugo's average in the playoffs is below that, which I, I didn't think was the case, but it is. Or at least it was at one point during the game. I don't remember if he got a hit afterwards. I don't think he did. But, yeah. And the reason I bring up Verdugo is I think he was the one that grounded out to end that inning. That, that inning where we had bases loaded... And then you have Rizzo. He's doing great. I, I have been very pleasantly surprised by Rizzo this, this postseason. He's doing really well. He hasn't had the power, but he's getting on base. He's getting hits. And that's what we need. And it'd be a lot better if we could score him. If he can come around to score. I know he's not the fastest. I know he's not going to be the best base runner. But move him through the bases. This is a team that has relied on the home runs. And you can't get the home runs when they matter. Even just regular hits. Something. But no. And then you have the ninth inning. I think it was Wells grounded out. Verdugo, I think, struck out. Then you have Torres. This is the inning after he made that boneheaded decision to sloppily play a ball that cost the Yankees a run, and Otani was able to move, and then fly, sack fly, he scores, tie game. He has the opportunity to make up for it. And you know what he does? He hits a double. It's a weird one. Fan interference. I, I really wish it was called a home run. But I know that's not the rules, so it wasn't going to be. And if you look at the replay, it wasn't going over. It was going to be a double if it dropped in. And it, it wasn't being caught, so double is the right call. But he gets a double. Then they intentionally walk Soto. Fair. You bring in the guy who's been struggling. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is a prime example of why players have, or is a perfect guy to look at if you want to see why players struggle in the playoffs. It's either 
they're battered from a long season, which is not the case here, or it's a mental thing. And that mental thing is very clear with Judge. If you watch him pl play this postseason versus the regular season, the big difference in what you see is the plate discipline. Judge is swinging at things he would not be swinging at in the regular season, and that's a problem. In the regular season, I, I think he led the majors in walks. It was either him or Soto, but either way, he was top two in walks. He had an incredibly high walk rate because he doesn't swing at pitches he doesn't want. But then come the playoffs, he doesn't do that. He's swinging at bad pitches. And it's a mental thing. I understand that he has the legacy of the Yankees and also the fact that he is the Yankees captain on his back that he has to live up to. So it's in his head that he wants to get these big hits. But it doesn't matter. You don't have to be the one to be clutch in the moment. If, if you win, which is taking those pitches, getting your walks, if you win, no one will care about your playoff shortcomings if the team wins in the end. Because you win. Or because you won. But it's a lot easier to look at those playoff shortcomings if they were the reason you lost. And that's what happened here. Judge, he's swinging at pitches he wouldn't normally do. Which, to be fair in this game, umpire was terrible. God awful. And that's a discussion for another day. Shouldn't... Putting in umps for playoff games because of seniority rather than actual talent is stupid. This umpire crew should be guys like Pat Holberg, John Libka, Nick Lentz. The good guys. The, the young, good umpires. Those who should... That's who should be the ones in the series, but because that's not how Major League Baseball is run, they're not the ones there. And so, you're going to have to deal with the bad calls. And I get that a lot of those calls, especially that one against Jazz in the first inning, ridiculous, not a strike. And, and you're going to get stuck with that. But the umpires also know that you generally have good plate discipline and you're normally right. I've worked as an umpire for five years. I know those things. I know what's going on in their heads. And granted, it's for kids that are like eight years old. But I can tell who's good and I can tell who knows what they're doing. And I tend to agree with them. It's a... It's a thing that goes on in an umpire's head. It, it's why Soto is able to be so on the plate. The umpires trust his zone. They trust their own zone, but it is definitely influenced by Soto because he knows it. He knows the zone very well, and so does Judge normally. But he's looking for those big hits. He wants the home runs. And, yes, I want them too. Judge is my favorite athlete in the world at the moment. I want to see him succeed. I want the Yankees to win, but also, as a fan of the Yankees, I want the Yankees to win. And as a fan of Judge specifically, I want him to do well and be the reason that they win. And it hurts so much more when I see the problem and I can do nothing about it. If he takes the pitches he walks because another thing with plate discipline if you're not going to swing at pitches outside of the zone that gets in the pitcher's head too because the pitcher knows that they have to throw it in the zone or else you won't swing so if they want to get you out they have to give you a good pitch to hit But if you're going to swing at garbage, they'll just throw it completely out of the zone where you'll swing anyway and strike out. The threat of a walk is, is a lot bigger than you'd really think.
And especially because you've seen how Stanton is performing this postseason. If Judge doesn't swing at the bad pitches and they walk him, they have to face Stanton. And the Dodgers don't want to do that. He, what's it, four games in a row this postseason? He, he's had a home run? That's incredible. Fantastic. Amazing. I love it. The Dodgers do not want to face him, and they do not want the bases loaded with him. Even if there are two outs, they want Judge out. So make it tough for them to get you out. Make the threat of the walk, and they'll give you a good pitch to hit. Whether it's a mistake, whether it's intentional, either way, you'll get the pitch and you don't even need the home run. You just need to score the guy in second, and you take the lead. That's all we need. And we don't. He gets out, goes to the bottom of the ninth, and Weaver comes in to finish it out, which he does. F five outs. G great job. You got five outs, no runs. He did, he did all he could. Great job. And we go to the 10th. Stan, I think, strikes out, which he deserves all of the slack that he's... I wanted him to, to do something there, but he deserves some slack because he was the only one that scored runs up to that point in the game. Rizzo, I don't remember if it was a hit. I, th I think it was a hit. Gets on base. No, Jazz is up. Jazz is up after Stan. Jazz gets up. He gets on base somehow. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. Jazz gets a hit. I think it was to, to shallow right field. He makes it to first. Steals second. Rizzo gets to a 3-0 count, and then they just decide, you know what, we're, we're going to walk him at this point. Which I thought was kind of funny. But yeah, that's what happened. Uh, Jazz steals third. We have man on first and third, one out. And then... Okay, Rizzo, who's up? Uh, I think Volpe. Hits it to the shortstop. Who... Dives for it. Makes the play, but not cleanly. Not cleanly enough where he can get the guy... He gets the guy at second. And Rizzo... <laughs> just standing in the way. Not even trying to go to second. Which, mm, I get what he was trying to do. And it, it worked enough to the point where Jazz scored. But it was kind of weird. I don't, know, I don't know or remember where he was when the ball was bobbled and when he stopped. But he prevented the double play. He allowed the run to score. That's fine. And then Wells comes up, does something I don't remember. Was it Wells who was there? Yeah, it was Wells. And then we come to the 10th. And Why am I blanking on what happened? I'm just so traumatized by how, how it ended. And I don't remember. You have Nick, uh, Nick Cousins come in. That, I remember. I think he got an out. Then, did he walk a guy? I think he did. I don't know. But either way, a guy gets him first. Then, the next guy, it's first... Uh, man out first, one out. Next guy comes up. And then it's ground ball to second base to Oswaldo Cabrera. When was the last time he played second? I do think that he's better defensively than Torres, so I don't I don't dislike it, but 
He dives for a ball, barely misses it. And now it's man on first and second. He could have gone to third, but slipped on his way, so he went back to second, thankfully. Or at least that's what I was feeling at the time. And then at that point, we bring in... Why, why does Boone do this? Boone brings in Nestor Cortez to pitch in a one-run game in the World Series in the 10th inning for the first time in 37 days. Why? I like Cortez. I really do. I think he's I think he's a good ball player. I think he's a great guy. But what are you doing putting him in that situation? If you don't know what you have because he hasn't pitched in a while. You remember you remember how Cole was in June. He struggled to start out coming off of injury because that's how it is. You Players tend to struggle come off of it, coming off of injury. So he put Nestor. Instead of Tim Hill. Tim Hill has been great this postseason. I don't know why they don't put him in. But Cortez is the one. He, he's to face Otani. And you know what? He gets Otani out and fly ball to left field. Uh, if Verdugo flies into the stands on it, uh, I could have sworn that the rule meant that after he flew into the stands, the runners advance, but I never actually saw them advance, so I don't know if they did. The broadcast didn't make it seem like they did, so I assume that they didn't. And then... So at this point, you have man on first and second, two outs, you're up by one, the winning run is on first. The winning run is on first base. It, it's Mookie Betts, who I understand you don't want to face. But in this situation, you have to, right? Apparently not to Boone! Because he decides that intentionally walking him to load the bases for Freddie Freeman was a good idea. It's not a great situation. You have to either face Mookie Betts or Freddie Freeman. Those are both terrible options as a pitcher. You don't want to face either of them. But I think that pitching to, the, pitching to Betts with the winning run on first is objectively the better option than pitching to Freeman with the with the winning run on second. I don't know how fast the Dodgers pinch runner, or not even pinch runner, I don't know if it was a pinch runner. I think the pinch ran at second, but not first. I don't know how fast the Dodgers runner who was at first and then at second is. I just don't know. But I'd rather have him get a hit. I, no. I'd rather make it so that the winning run will only score on a double rather than the winning run scoring on a single. It's two outs, so sack fly is not in play. Thank God. But it doesn't matter. Freddie Freeman comes up to the plate. Bases loaded. Two outs. First pitch. Home run. Way into the stands in right field. It's a walk-off grand slam for the first time in World Series history. It's a walk-off grand slam. Hindsight is twenty twenty and all, but even at the time when Boone walked Betts, I thought that was a terrible move. If you were walking Betts to face, like, a, just a, a normal hitter, fine. I, don't, I still don't agree with it, but I get it. You don't intentionally walk Mookie Betts 
to face Freddie Freeman. A man who has already been hitting that game, has had a triple, and is known for his doubles. Because that's what he does. And they throw it him anyway. First pitch, Grand Slam, Yankees lose 6-3. There are so many ways that the Yankees could have won that game. We could have chosen to pitch to Betts. If we pitch to him, we probably win. If we put in Hill instead of Cortez, we probably win. Because the thing with, with Hill, I already mentioned that he's been a great reliever this postseason. has been fantastic. And Cortez was coming off of injury. On top of that, with Otani up the plate, man on first and second, one out, the ideal scenario you are looking for is a ground ball for a double play. In that case, why do you not put in the pitch? I know Boone is obsessed with the lefty-righty analytics, and that is the only thing he hears about. He tries to say that, he, that he's all about analytics, but he knows that much and doesn't care about anything else. Sure, maybe Otani would do better against the right-handed pitcher, but Tim Hill, I don't know how accurate this number is, but earlier I saw that he has like a 60% ground ball rate. If you are looking for a double play, you want the guy that gets you the 60% chance of a ground ball. Double play ends the game. Hell, if Otani still flies out, you still want the ground ball. Because you know what else? A runner on first. If we face Betts, man on first and second, two outs with a ground ball pitcher, even if the ball gets through, I doubt that the runner on second is scoring, and there is no chance that the runner on first is. And then you face Freddie Freeman, even if the bases are loaded. If you get a ground ball, you're good. I know that, that Freddie Freeman was on a bum ankle. I mentioned it earlier. And maybe that had to do with why you decided to pitch to him. So that he wouldn't be able to beat out a ground ball. Because I, I do think Betts is faster. If you want to beat out, if you want a guy to not be able to beat out a ground ball, you put in the pitcher that will get you the ground ball. Because on top of being good at ground balls, pitchers that do are good at getting ground balls, you know what else they're good at? Home run suppression! And how did the game end on a home run? Balls that drop are not as likely to be home runs. I know Stanton hit a moon blast on one on a pitch that was at his ankles. But for Stanton, his ankles are are at a normal man's knees. And even then, it's Stanton. He can hit a ball out as long as he makes contact. It doesn't matter. I can't say the same. And while Betts and Freeman are pretty strong hitters. They're not Stanton. They don't hit like Stanton. They're not going to hit a low ball as a home run nearly as likely. That sentence didn't make any sense, but I don't care. And so we put... In we put in Tim Hill. We win that game. But no. Freddie Freeman Grand Slam, they lose.
And like I was saying earlier before I got sidetracked, there were so many ways they could win this game. I mentioned not intentionally walking bets. Putting in Tim Hill. If Soto fields a ball cleanly. Either one of the triples. If either one of those is fielded cleanly, it's not a triple. Which, the first one, I guess we did, they didn't score on, so that one's fine. But the second one, that was off the wall. If he fields that cleanly, or Torres fields the, the ball cleanly on the throw, either one of those happens, Otani doesn't get to third, and there is no sack fly for a score. It doesn't happen. If Verdugo plays the ball cleanly, then I think it was Gavin Lux who hit that triple. He doesn't get to third. He doesn't score on a sack fly. We don't leave 11 runs on bases on base in regular innings. If one of them scores, we win that game. It doesn't go to extra innings. The game is over. If Judge does something, the game is over. I saw some people talking about how if we uh, had Judge, or no, not Judge, um, if we kept Cole on the mound, the game would have been different. I don't really agree with that. Because they didn't score when he was taken out, and I I can't imagine he would have gone past seven anyway. Uh, because, again, like I mentioned, they want to save him for game four, and uh, that might be considered a short rest. I'm no, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's, yeah, short rest. They don't want to pitch him short rest. I get it. Uh, they don't want to elevate his pitch count before them. That, that makes sense. So I don't hate that decision as much. If Judge does something... They win that game. If Rodugo gets a hit while they have the bases loaded in the fifth inning, they win that game. So many small things would have made the difference in that game. And none of it was enough. The Dodgers did not win that game. The Yankees lost it. It may, it may sound like the same thing, but there's a key distinction. The Dodgers made mistakes. The Yankees outplayed the Dodgers for most of that game. But they couldn't capitalize on anything. The Dodgers took advantage of the Yankees' mistakes. The Yankees couldn't do it on the Dodgers. And that's the difference. If this game had not ended the way that it did, I wouldn't be making this video right now. I wouldn't have been sitting here for the past 38 minutes and 59 seconds complaining about this game. If they... If it wasn't a loss like that. A walk-off Grand Slam in the World Series for the first time ever. In extra innings. When there's so many different ways that you could have won that game, I wouldn't be making this video. If the Yankees won, I wouldn't be making this video. If it was a blowout by the Dodgers, and they just completely outplayed us, I wouldn't be making this video. If the Dodgers just outright play, play better, and are the better team throughout the game, I wouldn't be making this video. Tip, tip the cap. They did better, they deserve it. But it hurts so much more when 
you have so many opportunities and you're this close to a win and you can't pull it out. This game is a first for me. This is the first time that I have experienced a championship, not just for the Yankees, but for any of the professional sports teams that I cheer for. I, I've never seen them win, much less even make the championship. This is the first time I've seen it. I, the first sports game that I was at in full attendance, or the first sports game that I watched in full that I was not in attendance at uh, was Super Bowl Forty Nine Patriots Seahawks in February of 2015. I was at a few Yankee games before that. I remember, I don't remember a lot about the game itself. I don't know if the Yankees won or not, but when I was probably through uh, 2008, I would, I would say. Uh, I was at the old Yankee Stadium. Uh, I watched that game in full. I remember being there. I remember having a good time, for the most part. But I don't remember much about what happened, other than uh, getting my leg stuck uh, <laughs> in the chair. Like, how, the way that they fold up. Uh, I got my leg stuck in there. It wasn't a fun time at the time. But it was funny. I also do remember uh, being asked where I wanted to sit and saying that I wanted to sit behind home plate because I didn't want to get hit by a ball. I don't know if we actually sat there, but that's what I remember saying. But back to what I was talking about. Super Bowl 49. First time I watched the, a sports game in full. And then like from that point on, I kind of got into uh, professional sports gradually over time. And different ones at varying times. Like, I mean, in 2015, I would occasionally check in on games. But, like, the first time I really got invested into a sport at all was uh, 20, uh, the 2016 Giants. And it helps that they were really good that year. They were pretty good. They went 11-5. I thought they were a lot better than they actually were because I didn't understand the game well enough. As I'm looking back, our, our defense was really good and just nothing else. And then Yankees, the first season that I started caring, was 2017. Like, of course, I'd watch from time to time, but I wouldn't really think about it too much. 2017 was the first year I really got invested into it. The 2017 Yankees were so good. And then the Astros cheated. I, The Yankees didn't have a lot of expectations that year. They were supposed to be okay. And then they went to the ALCS Game 7 and lost to a cheating team where the home team won every game. And Rangers, first season I really started caring was 2022. Like 2021-22. And then the Knicks, I I don't think I've really had that moment yet where I've fully got invested in it yet, but I do still want them to win. But you've noticed what I've mentioned. My four teams are the Yankees, Giants, Rangers, and Knicks. And the order that I care about them is probably in that order that I just listed them. Before this game that happened last night, the last time any of those teams made the championship was June of 2014 in the Stanley Cup Final by the Rangers. This is the first. I have never experienced any of them in the championship. I've, I've experienced five conference championship losses in times that I've actually cared. This is the first time that they've actually made it to the big dance. I was so excited for this game yesterday. And then, go, 
I, I was having partially a great time during the game because it's good baseball. But losing that way, I just want to win. And I, I know that if any fan of non yeah, of the non Yankees or any just team that doesn't have a lot of success regularly trying to come in this and like, oh spoil the Yankees fans. And I get it. I The Yankees have been very competitive for a long time. And they they may have not won at all, but they're still competitive, and other teams can't say that. Pirates have been awful for a while. This is the first year the Tigers have made it in a while. The Angels, oh, the Angels. I, I just feel so bad for Trout and the Angels fan base. But it's not like, it's not like this is something I've seen a lot of. I've seen the rivals win it. I, I've seen Boston win it so much. I'm a New York sports fan. I don't want Boston to win. And they've done that. The Red Sox have won. The Celtics have won. The Patriots have won in this time. The Bruins may have not won, but they have won the cup more recently than the Rangers. They may have not won in the, in the time that I've cared, but still, like I mentioned, they, they won it more recently than the Rangers, and they've been to the Stanley Cup Final three times since. In amateur sports, I, I've experienced championships. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I, I would trade those moments for nothing. And so I know what it means to win. I, and that's why I want it again. Because it's such a good feeling. And I just don't have it. I, I know that it's game one. But like I said earlier, I think that, this, that game one was must win. And they didn't win. Oh yeah, something else I forgot to mention. I've seen the Eagles win the Super Bowl. That also doesn't make me happy. I've never seen. I had something else I wanted to say. I was thinking about it earlier, and I can't remember. I was thinking about it just three minutes ago. I looked over to my left. I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, I'll finish this thought, and then I'll get to that. And I. I lost it. I think it had something to do with what this means. I can't remember it. God, what the hell was it? A lot of what I've said throughout this video, the reason why I came up with this idea, well, I shouldn't say came up with it, but the reason why I decided to commit to it is because in the shower this morning, I was ranting a lot about these same points that I was making, that I'm making now, and about how I feel. So I'm trying to retrace my steps through it, because I wasn't in the, sh I had already gotten out of the shower by the time I thought of what I was about to say. And I know where I was. Where I know where I was. I'm trying to retrace my steps. How did I get there? 
And what was I thinking about? Well, in the meantime, I'll give you something else that I wanted to mention, but just didn't quite get around to it. Uh... We're 50 minutes into the- wow, 50 minutes. I thought I was gonna be here for maybe 20. <laughs> We're nearing on an hour. Uh, I started this a little before 10.30, so it's probably 11.15... 15-ish now. So, the umpire scorecard is probably out. I'm recording this using my phone, so I can't check the time because of that. Uh, and also for that reason, I haven't seen the umpire scorecard, and I want to see it. But it was bad. Awful umpiring. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes, see if I can actually think of what it was. That's it. This game was absolute cinema. No question about it. This was fantastic baseball. And as neutral fans, as much as they as much as pretty much all of them hate these two teams, if they just want to see good baseball, they're eating good. These playoffs have been phenomenal. Every game, it's been so exciting, the entire way through. Pete Alonso, like Pete Alonso's uh, home run against the Brewers in Game Three, the base clearing double by the Tigers in Game Two against the Astros, uh, the Mets clutching against the Phillies in Game One, the walk-offs, uh, Game Three between Yankees and, and Guardians, Indians, whatever the hell they're called. The high-scoring ridiculousness of the Dodgers-Mets series. The home run off of Emmanuel Class A falling apart and allowing these big hits. It's been incredible baseball. And that makes me want to win it even more. It's been so good. And the way that you make it incredible baseball like this even better is by winning at the end it makes them i i'm making assumptions when i say this but I imagine it makes it makes the winning all that much better because you went through a gauntlet it wasn't that every team was just kind of eh the teams were good and it's good memories You, you get good experiences in good and good baseball, and then you win at the end. That's what I want to see. Now, realistically, I want the, the Yankees to, to win every game. I don't want to feel stressed, and I just want them to win it all. It's that simple. But I... The feeling of winning after incredible ball I'd imagine it's amazing like yeah this is what we had to go through and we did it this was what happened this year and we were the ones on top it's one game There's at least three more. The, 
there's probably going to be more because I'm sure the Yankees are going to take at least one game. But I really don't want to be down one in, down one nothing in a series. I know it's not the death spell, but still. You don't want to start down. It doesn't help. Give yourself the advantage. And I couldn't do it. Game two is tonight. I'll be watching it with the boys. Hopefully. I wasn't able to watch it with the guys today because, or last night, because the, the spot that we normally meet, uh, some guy was there, and he was watching Kung Fu Panda 4 on his own, which, I no fault that, I, he didn't do anything wrong, but it was kind of annoying that he had our spot during Game of the World Series, so I went to a different location, and it was also kind of weird, because not everyone was able to uh, be there, because uh, a lot of the people that I watched with are Jewish, and uh, I don't know what the holiday is, but there's something where they're not allowed to mess electronic stuff well where some of them would kind of use me as a loophole because i'm not jewish so i could operate everything it's it's not that they couldn't enjoy any of it it's that they couldn't do it themselves uh and so if i did it it wouldn't be breaking any rules so a lot of them did that but even, even then without the spot we just couldn't And then after the game, after it was over, I just walked out of where I was, walked back. And then on the way, I saw one of the guys that would be watching, the, that would normally watch the game with us. I don't know where he was, but it clearly wasn't where we were. And then we were like, oh, why would they, why would they put Nestor, why would they walk him? And I was feeling the same way that I was talking about earlier. not over. I want to win. I hear police sirens in the background. Hopefully they, hopefully it's the NYPD cheering on the Yankees. I know it's not. I'm not in New York City right now. But yeah. Game two's tonight. Clean slate. Don't worry about yesterday. Move on. I think Rodon's pitching, and I think we're facing Yamamoto. It's time to show him why he should have signed with us. They have to win today. If it, it doesn't matter if after today three of the five games are in New York. You don't want to risk that. You have to win today. This is the time. I, and I am ready to be hurt again. Thank you for watching. <laughs> this has been... Oh, we just crossed the 59 minute mark. I thought this was going to be 20 minutes. I've been here for an hour. Well, I'll get this up later today. I still have to work on the Mario and Luigi video that's supposed to come out today. I don't know if it will. I might just push that to tomorrow. Hell, it might even be next week. Probably not. But yeah. That's about it. Uh, I'll see you guys. Bye.